Hey fellow hearts, what I'm going to present to you is some of the oldest wisdom we know. I'm going to talk to you about some scriptures about alchemy and hermetics. What you are going to learn right now is called the seven principles of this universe, the seven hermetic laws. Um, this knowledge is said to be passed down by the Egyptian god Tarth to mankind. Um, he passed it down to Hermes Trismegistos during the Hellenistic era. People have been arguing about um, the origins because there's no physical evidence whatsoever to prove those claims. But it just naturally made its way to the surface at any other era and it reoccurred throughout all parts of the world and throughout different religions and cultures and got practiced all around the world at different times until it reached Europe where it heavily influenced the Renaissance. Um, it has been influencing revolutions and whenever it got a broader audience in society it led the people to more love, more peace and more understanding and even to revolutions. So why does this knowledge hold such a huge power? Because it shows us the way to overcome duality and rather understand it fully to grow the capability of balancing everything to its point of renewal. You'll see. The so-called Emerald Tablets, in which Hermes describes the secrets of this universe, encompass 13 tablets about wisdom, magic and the truth of the truth. The version I am going to present right now is the Kybalion from 1908, uh, written by some individual or individuals calling themselves the three initials. So here we go. Law number one is mentalism. Quote, the all is mind, the universe is mental, end of quote. Thoughts come first. They create. Everything that got created on this earth was an idea in someone's mind before. I mean, think about it. Think about thinking. We do this all the time and it influences every occurrence in our life. Knowing that, the best that we can do is to train ourselves awareness. In my next video, I'm going to get deeper into this topic and how and why you should do this. For the beginning, just think consciously. Think about the things that you want to achieve. Think positive. Think creative. Whatever you want to change in your life, it starts with the thought. Pay attention to your wishes and desire. Give them space. I mean, give them all the space. Ask yourself, what do I want? As soon as you wake up every morning and ask yourself throughout the day, whenever you think about it. Even if you don't know it by now, ask and you shall receive. There will be some kind of answer. Somewhere in your body has to be the answer to the question what it is that you want. You will find that out. If you keep on concentrating on your thoughts and start to control them, you will watch your life change. And that's a promise. I've been through this. <laughs> and it's great. Law number two is correspondence. Quote, as above, so below, as below, so above. Beware questions. Today, many modern questions like the YouTuber a call for an uprising warn other Christians about exactly this principle. They call it a satanic slogan. However, this is exactly half true. In Matthew 6.10, Jesus says, uh, let your kingdom come, let your will take place as above, so below. Some versions say as in heaven, as in, on earth, which is exactly the same. What dark occultists and satanists do is turning everything down. They flip everything head to toe, which isn't like correspondence. It's just the opposite. It's just doing the opposite. <laughs> what it really means is that everything in this universe follows the same patterns, micro, macro, every plant, every animal, every human, every little cell, every atom, and so on, and, and so on, and so on. The Fibonacci numbers, the golden ratio rule, everything is the same. As in the universe, so in your body and every cell in your body and so on and so on and so on. This means the whole universe is exactly like you and you are exactly like the universe. So you and I, we have the same purpose. You and I have the same purpose as the universe. So isn't that great? Isn't that what we long for? In the end, we are all the same. Like Everything is the same, not even just us, everything. If you learn how to control your thoughts, please take this into consideration. 
and become one with us. Law number three is vibration. Quote, nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. End of quote. Vibration manifests in different frequencies. Our brain receives those frequencies and forms our deception from it. There's no such thing as no motion ever. Nothing is ever at complete rest. Uh, in this whole universe, you will never find anything that would be motionless. Nothing. Maybe you can't see, feel or hear the movement, but there's always some. Like neither you can see the wind or sounds, but it's there all the time. And think about atoms. They build everything. Right? And they never keep still. What does that mean for your life? Well, that's the best of all, because death doesn't exist. There's no such thing as no movement. You don't die and dissolve to nothing. This is just not possible. Every single particle of you, every single part of you goes back into the circle of life. When you've learned to control your thoughts, promise, you'll find out what that means. Because many people might answer to this idea, hmm, how could this serve me as a person? But this question comes from a mind that never learned how to leave the body they only now exist in. If you learn about your mind, you'll come to the conclusion that you are more than your ego and your body, and you will definitely lose your belief in death the way this society sees it. Plus, vibration is the key to magic. But I'm going to show you this in a later video. <laughs> this is like the fundamental knowledge that you need to know to become a magician um, and by now you kind of just need to know that those laws exist. Law number four and my personal favorite one is polarity. Quote, everything is dual, everything has poles, everything has its pair of opposites, like and unlike are the same, opposites are identical in nature but different in degree, extremes meet, all truth are but half truth. All paradoxes may be reconciled. So isn't that perfect? All paradoxes may be reconciled. This is exactly what I am waiting for. So this is the master key, my fellow hearts. Everything has its opposite and opposites are the same. Crazy, isn't it? I mean, hot and cold are different degrees of warmth. Wet and dry are the absence or presence of water and um, fast or slow are like different speeds. So, and when it comes to humans, a left extremist is the same as a right extremist. Um, a masculist is the same as a feminist. A fanatic Christian, the same as a satanist. The gun supporter, the same as their opponent. I guess your initial reaction was to judge all of these people and say something like, yes, they are all the same kind of stupid. Or maybe you identify with one of those groups and felt the urgent need to defend them. And this is exactly what polarity is all about. It's polarization. You can't get away from it. But you could study it on Twitter, Facebook or anywhere else on the internet if you like. <laughs> Polarity isn't a bad thing in itself. It's basically how your computer works. It's zero, no energy, one energy. But our computers just never judge. It's yin and yang. And for your life, that means the knowledge of polarity has the power to overcome, divide and conquer. Wait, what's divide and conquer? Well, this is a doctrine founded by the Romans to rule the masses. Uh, it's the idea to keep people in constant fights against uh, themselves, to keep them from going after the real powers that be. If you want to control the masses, you just divide them in two different groups with conflicting interests. That way they will forever be derailed by fighting each other. Does that sound familiar to you, maybe? Well, if you think this is the way our culture still works, then I am with you, my friend. And it's not by accident. Whatever. To master polarity, practice the following. <sighs> React not. Learning to control your thoughts also means to take back judgment. 
Take a break before you react to anything. We are ruled by people who know about this principle and use it against us. We can change that. Every one of us. Literally center yourself. At first this will be a big effort, but the more you practice to not react, you'll find yourself experiencing oneness. It'll become easier and easier until there will be no effort at all. We will be talking about that a lot. Hold on, start by thinking about polarity, understand it and never be ruled again. Law number five, rhythm. Quote, everything flows out and in, everything has its tights. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. Everything has a certain rhythm. Day and night, the menstruation circle, spring, summer, fall and winter. This is because of law number two, three and four. Every vibration is a frequency. Every frequency comes in waves and every wave has its ups and downs. For your practical life, that means that there are days where you feel less energy. One could do two things. You could either decide to take those days for your rest and to take a closer look into your needs and desires and for relaxation, or mind over matter. One could give as much effort as they can to just ignore the fact of having no energy whatsoever. I mean, you can change anything on its own particular scale and from no energy to high voltage are many, many, many possible stages on the same scale. So whenever you are sensing less energy, take some thoughts about rhythm into consideration, like what moon phase are you in? What have you been doing the days before? What month is it? What year? What have you been producing or manifesting the last days? And please never start blaming yourself if you don't feel so much energy. Never blame yourself for feeling tired. This is absolutely okay. Uh, this is just rhythm. You will be tired at some point. And connect with nature. There's definitely a reason to feel that way and if you can't do the magic on some days don't stop believing in yourself for this is just your break everybody needs to rest for renewal think about your witchery like a battery that needs to charge us sometimes law number six cause and effect quote Every cause has its effect, every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many plans of causation, but nothing escapes the law. All other laws considered, everything causes an effect. Everything we do, think, feel, everything outside of us, everything inside, the weather, photosynthesis, everything is in correspondence all the time. Law number two. Call this causality, call it karma, you name it. It means no one and nothing escapes the consequences of their own doings and even their thoughts and words. The good thing about it is when you do say, feel and think positive, then it is exactly what you'll get back for it. The physical world we are now facing is what humanity manifested before. There's no way changing that. What has been manifested cannot be undone. Today, many people are stuck um, looking at the symptoms of those unfavorable manifestations from before, when it comes to politics, diseases or whatever. But you can't change what has been manifested. You can only manifest something new and you should do that. <laughs> so start with law number one. The underlying has to change how we think, feel and act. Whatever happens, stop caring about and judging it. Ask for the cause. Change the cause, never the effect. And carefully watch every step you take, for you are constantly producing effects with your actions. The last principle is gender, law number seven. Quote, gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. End of quote. Creation always comes from a male and a female part. 
Yes, I know that is confusing because we're used to think about the physical plane of sex when we talk about male and female creation. That's true, but superficial. The first principle will always be mentalism. So the male part of your brain, where your consciousness and willpower is, penetrates sort of your right, right brain, where your subconsciousness and your creative female part lies. The male power is the outgoing energy that pushes your desire into your subconsciousness. The womb of your mind where we go pregnant with ideas. If you want to create, you need to find the perfect balance between your male and female aspects. The perfect balance between action and rest, awareness and dreaminess. Practice awareness and learn how to control your thoughts. It's the only way to change this world. In the next video, I will show you how you can change your thoughts and it how changing your thoughts perfectly. has the potential to change this world. Yes, your thoughts have the potential to change this world. This is a promise. I hope to see you back again. <laughs> also, make yourself comfortable and please never be scared, my fellow hearts. <laughs>